All right, well, you're perfectly entitled, I suppose, to seek leave. Uh, is there any objection? Yeah. Oh, funny that. <laughs> <laughs> I declare the House in committee for further consideration of the psychoactive substances increasing penalty for supply and distribution amendment bill. Madam Chair. Madam Speaker. Members, the House is in committee for the Psychoactive Substances Increasing Penalty for Supply and Distribution Amendment Bill. When we were last debating the bill, we were considering Clause 4. Chloe Schwabrick had the call, and she has 4 minutes and 35 seconds, if she so wishes. Ete mangai. I call Chloe Schwabrick. Ete mangai tēnā koe tēnā koutou e te whare. Madam Chair, this is of course the most substantive part of this proposed piece of legislation, that being to increase the penalty uh, for those who are um, supplying or presumed to be supplying as a result of the threshold that they possess uh, synthetic substances, or rather actually all psychoactive substances, a point that has been made abundantly clear throughout this debate. Uh, the Psychoactive Substances Act was created in 2013 for sake of catching all substances that were not encompassed within the Misuse of Drugs Act classification scheduling. It was an attempt uh, to try and fill the gaps uh, in terms of the large amount of substances that were being produced by uh, backstreet chemists. So, uh, as proposed in Clause 4, uh, it amends Section 73A of the Psychoactive Substances Act to replace two years uh, with eight years. And there are a number of supplementary order papers uh, to this clause, uh, many of which seek to provide clarifying uh, kind of things that must be considered, rather, by judges uh, in their sentencing of those uh, for eight years. Uh, and a number of those are actually in the name of my colleague, Dr Duncan Webb, uh, who is obviously an esteemed uh, former lecturer uh, in the legal profession. Uh, so I think that he probably takes uh, quite a bit of uh, pride in his work on these supplementary order papers. And I think that, that, there's some, that they are worthy of pride. Uh, because they do uh, offer um, a whole lot more clarification uh, around the purpose, I think, and the general thrust of what it is that Simeon Brown and the National Party propose that they are trying to achieve uh, with this increasing penalties for psychoactive substances. Uh, there is also an SOP in the name of my colleague Kiri Tapu Allen, uh, which is actually, I think, even though I myself have a number of supplementary order papers in my name, probably my favourite uh, supplementary order paper posed on uh, Clause 4, uh, because it provides for the need to uh, take into account a number of different uh, factors in the sentencing of individuals who are uh, prosecuted for uh, supply or distribution or presumption of supply or distribution. Uh, the factors that Kiritapu Allen proposes should be taken into account. Uh, um, and I, I would note as well that I, I think that it's incredibly uh, brilliant that there are the te reo Māori names for each of these things that must be taken into account. Uh, but for example, face-to-face -face reconciliation between the offender and the affected person. Uh, that is obviously part and parcel of a rehabilitative, uh, restorative justice process. Uh, appreciation and shame in respect of wrongdoing and its impact. Rehabilitation. Uh, then the likes of the haora, uh, the physical aspect, the spiritual aspect, the family aspect and the psychological aspect. As well, and I would note it's important, uh, the offender's whānau background, uh, the principle that we should strive for values and practices of aroha, that being love and compassion, manakitanga, support and kindness, wairuatanga, the importance of spirituality, and whānaunatanga, the value of connectedness to family and community to take into account any wider matters that indicate that social and cultural influences may have had an impact on the offending, and any matters drawn to the court's attention under section 27 of the Sentencing Act 2009. Madam Chair, I think that all of these factors are of critical importance to be considered when we are looking at sentencing people uh, for any form of uh, 
uh, criminalised, uh, sorry, any form of criminalisation that we've come up with uh, under the so-called war on drugs. Uh, because as all, is the all of the evidence and research demonstrates, uh, particularly with regards to this uh, psychoactive substances increasing penalty for supply and distribution amendment bill, such as what pu was put forward at the select committee stage, uh, there is absolutely no evidence that increasing penalties will have a dent with regard to affordability and access of these substances, but will only serve to increase our prison muster. However, one thing that I do want to commend Simeon Brown on, uh, as far as this member's bill goes, is the point that he has raised multiple times and which I'd like to address and ask him today. And that is, does the National Party agree to not penalising drug users? I'll call the Honourable Chris Farford. Uh, Madam Chair, um, thank you for the chance to speak to Clause 4 uh, of the uh, member's bill.